Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. And another heavyweight news mashup video today, starting with Dillian White and some comments that Frank Warren has made about White's current predicament. So the WBC interim champion and also the mandatory challenger White has launched legal action against the WBC to protect his position. The WBC had ordered that he be the mandatory challenger and have his shot no later than February. 2021. But in recent days, Fury's uh, other co-promoter, Bob Arriman, as well as Fury himself, have expressed very little interest in facing White should Tyson Fury beat Deontay Wilder in their third fight. They would like White to get out of the way to allow an undisputed fight to happen. And if he doesn't, there's been the threat that Fury could be upgraded to franchise champion to bypass White. So Frank Warren, who also co-promotes Fury along with Aram, he's taken the opportunity to have a pot shot at Eddie Hearn, saying, You can see why he's upset, and this is speaking of White, he doesn't feel he's been looked after. If Dillian was with me, he would have fought for a world title by now. I had Tyson Fury fighting for a world title within six months of signing him. We kept him nice and active and then got him the wild to fight. And Warren also goes on to say, if I were him, I'd be asking the question, why hasn't my promoter been able to get me those fights? He's been on about suing the WBC, but they don't seem to be the problem. If Dillian White was with me, he'd have fought for a world title by now. That's Frank Warren's statements. Some of the situation for balance, it's not just down to the promoter, Eddie Hearn, and remembering White is self-managed, he's on a fight-by-fight -fight deal with Matchroom, so he's half in and half out at the same time. Uh, White has uh, actively turned down some opportunities. You may recall there was a title shot a year ago against Anthony Josh with three belts open at Wembley. He decided not to take it because he didn't like the money that would have been on offer had he won the first fight. So the rematch money said, no, I know my worth. Also turned down other opportunities. So it's not just a case of uh, matchroom not being able to provide opportunities. Sometimes they just haven't been taken. And I think there is also Dillian White has been in the Dillian White pay-per-view business and keeping that going until he got the sort of fight that he wanted. He was making pretty good money against the likes of Joseph Parker, Derek Chisora and Oscar Rivas. So pushing the envelope for those uh, title shots, you know, he was doing it to an extent. But in the meantime, he was clipping the ticket on money fights on pay-per-view in the United Kingdom. So it's not quite as uh, black and white as Frank Warren describes, but Dillian White currently engaging in some legal action against the WBC. He wants his shot against Fury should Fury beat Wilder. Obviously, his uh, mandatory position, it was actually taken from him and pushed out a year, and they made Fury the mandatory for 2020, and that all occurred while the UCAN situation was underway for White uh, in the late stages of 2019. It's a messy and murky situation, but Frank Warren... Uh, obviously wanting to uh, just get a few points against Eddie Hearn, his rival promoter in the United Kingdom. Lucas Brown has turned his attention back to fighting the Russian Abdi Dovtayev in the United States. The pair had previously been scheduled to fight, but the pandemic postponed their matchup. It was to be in Las Vegas in March. So you can see here on screen, so it says uh, Lucas Brown targets a big knockout win against Abdi Dovtayev, and that's from a Sky Sports story. Recently, Brown has been talking up the prospect of a potential fight with Joseph Parker. Brown was named as one of three options for Parker, who is expected to be back in the ring in New Zealand, potentially a fight that would be outside of his matchroom contract. Brown was expected to be the leading candidate for that. But in recent weeks, uh, the talk of Brown being the opponent, it has gone somewhat quiet. And with this sort of uh, talk about going back to the United States, perhaps um, negotiations have floundered there. But of that Sky Sports story that talks about Lucas Brown, he says, I'm in a new gym with a new trainer and I'm very excited about showcasing my skills and making a bang. 
I love the fact I'm able to fight again to fight in the USA against a fighter like Dovtayev. He's a very strong and tough man and it will be two men bashing away in the ring. I feel it will be a very good fight and very fan friendly. I've taken it down to once a day training during the pandemic to make sure I don't burn out and overtrain, but to keep active and busy and focused. I'm in a new gym with a new trainer and very excited about showcasing my skills. And Dovtayev is also quoted in the story saying, I was very excited about fighting Lucas Brown on March 28 in the US. It was going to be my coming out party. He is a quality fighter. I was looking forward to the opportunity of showing that I'm a new force in the heavyweight division. Training with Sugar Hill Stewart at his Cronk gym for the last three years has improved every facet of my game. Having such a master coach gives me even more confidence when I go into the ring. So clearly that fight looks like it's going to be rescheduled and potentially Brown is now off the table as an option for Joseph Parker. Although he has been saying he wants that fight, even if he does face Abdi Dovtayev. But if Brown does take another loss, that will potentially take some of the shine off him as a potential opponent for Joseph Parker, especially if he's knocked out brutally which, let's face it, is a possibility. Brown at 41 is pretty shot these days. The Cuban heavyweight Frank Sanchez says he'd like to fight against the American Michael Hunter. He says, I've asked Mike Hunter and all I've heard is crickets from Eddie Hearn and Hunter. Eddie says he has a problem that he pays fighters too much and they don't want to fight anyone. Well, with what he pays, I'll fight anyone. Like I've previously said, give me Hunter, Joe Parker, F.A. Jugba, Junior Far, anyone. I will prove my ability in a big fight. So currently Frank Sanchez Fauré is 15-0 and in, in some respects he's in a position that Michael Hunter was in about 18 months to two years ago. Before the Martin Bacoli fight, Michael Hunter was finding it hard to get meaningful fights. He fought Bacoli, got what was seen as an upset win, and after that he struggled to get some of the fights that he would like to have been in. Even now, he's calling out guys, and not a lot of guys are looking at Michael Hunter as a guy that they want to fight. He's high risk and potentially low reward. But he has been making his way in the heavyweight division. This is Michael Hunter I'm talking about. Beating up Sergei Kuzman in 2019, the draw with Alexander Povetkin, and he's reached a certain point in the division now, that sort of top 15 level, somewhere maybe between 10 to 15. I know some people do have him in their top 10. And I guess Frank sanchez Fauré is on the outside looking in. It's a very similar situation. He wants guys to fight him to prove his ability, but he's struggling to get those matchups. And some of that will come down to the language barrier, but also the profile of Frank Sanchez is pretty low right now. So he really is uh, in a position where he'd like to take some of that shine from Hunter. I'm not sure that Hunter would entertain that fight, especially if the money wasn't right. At the end of the day, those things matter, although I do like a Frank Sanchez foray and Michael Hunter fight. I think that would be very fun and entertaining. Two guys that can move well, decent pop with their right hand, good in and out boxes. Boxing manager Sam Jones says he would like to make Sonny Conto versus his fighter Guido Vianello in 2021. He would like to have that in Rome or Philadelphia. He says it's a big fight and Vianello is ready for a good fight against Sonny Conto. Vianello and Conto are in the top rank stable together. Seemingly it would be an easy fight to make but I guess with Conto being under five fights at this point is top rank going to entertain that matchup? That's the question that I have with that fight although it's an entertaining fight in my view. And rounding up this heavyweight news mashup video, the unbeaten Lucas Rosansky, who stopped Izu Agono back in 2019, is in the ring this weekend in Poland. He'll be facing the unheralded journeyman Eriks Kalosnikovs, who has a record of 10, 8 and 1. Rosansky currently 11 and 0. What do you make of it all? Drop a comment, loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.